Radio check. Loud and clear. All righty, here we go. All right, you guys, we are headed to town to run some errands. We've got to do some grocery shopping. We're hoping to give the army truck a bath. And I think there might even be something really exciting at our postal box. We're hoping to end the day with a little bit of a date night because it's been a while. Let's get this thing cleaned up. Probably should fix that. I'm really excited about this. EcoFlow reached out to us about testing their new power kit, and I think we have a pretty cool plan for it. This kit is supposed to be so easy to install that even a monkey could do it, or maybe a boondog. So we're gonna try to install it right here in this parking lot. We are not prepared at all. We have no idea what we're getting ourselves into, and we wanna get it done by this evening. Let's see what happens. Ooh. That's cool looking. This is a brand new product, and I normally do an exhaustive amount of research before diving into something, but other than the technical specs, I have no idea what's in this box or what to expect. Let's find out. Holy cow. This is light. This is very light. I think this is the inverter and the solar charge controller and like the combiner box. I think this is everything. Oh, what's that thing? Smart distribution panel. That's nice. Ooh. Okay, my hope is there's this space behind the seat where there was some kind of military equipment installed that I think is going to be perfect for installing all this stuff. And 16. I think they're going to fit. Put the batteries down there and we'll put the inverter up here. It's going to be perfect. Something we really struggled with when installing the power system on our camper was how to mount the batteries. And this actually came with these really slick mounting brackets and a template to drill for them, and then straps to go around them to secure these batteries, even in like an off-road vehicle. Something I just noticed when I was carrying this battery over is that it actually has the fuse built right here into the top of it. So there's no need to have a separate fuse block. That's pretty cool. I think the batteries are gonna fit perfectly like that. They fit perfectly in here. These pre-made cables are super cool. No figuring out wire gauge size, no crimping connectors together, no guessing. It's just already ready to go. It's like, yeah, nice. runs on 48 volts, which allows the wire size and all these cables to be way smaller than if it was a 12 volt system, which means easier routing and easier um, cable management. Wow, they're very secure. They're way more secure than the batteries in our camper. Trying to figure out what the main inverter box is called because it's more than an inverter. It's also the DC DC charger, the MPPT, the combiner box. It's like everything all in one. So, what's it called? Power hub. It's called a power hub. 
I am pretty sure that there are directions somewhere in this packaging that are probably really easy to follow. But this is Riley we're talking about, and he thought it would be fun to see if he could figure out how to put it all together without any instructions. Comes with some mounting brackets. Aha! It came with hardware. Cleverly marked EcoFlow Power Hub. This is so light compared to the one in our camper. We just need to screw this down. Good thing they gave me extra screws. One's coming. Okay. I'm gonna go one size bigger with my screw. Nice. There we go. Four and three sixteenths. Okay, slide it back. So now that's locked in. All I have to do is put these two screws in the front and it can't slide off. This is the distribution panel. I know that because it says distribution panel on the front, and I honestly have no idea what this is. It's a complete AC and DC circuit breaker and fuse panel all in one. So like if you have, if you had an RV or a motorhome or something, this could fully replace the existing circuit breaker panel to integrate all of your RV circuits into the power hub system. That's pretty cool that it comes with this and saves a lot of wiring or work if you were to try to piece all this together from off the shelf stuff. Whoa, AC out, DC out. That's really slick. This is unconfirmed, but it says DC out remote control, which makes me think that on the little control pack, there's a, that these are switches. And there's a way to either have constant on or switched on. This box is meant to be either flush mounted. So like if you had a cabinet, you could cut out for this box and mount it flush inside the cabinet or surface mounted right on the back of it here. Distribution panel is done. It's just that like that. I might eventually add the screws, but for now, I think that is installed. I might as well run the alternator charge cable at the same time. We're lucky enough in this truck, there's actually a, um, 100 amp auxiliary power location right here behind the dash. <laughs> so this is the alternator charge cable. This allows the power kit to get charged from the vehicle's alternator. You, you can either hook this up to the alternator or the vehicle's battery, pretty much anywhere that has like at least a 50 amp fused circuit. Um, so we're gonna hook it up right here at the auxiliary circuit. I hit. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't bring any zip ties, so I'm reusing the packaging. It might seem kind of strange that we're installing such a massive power system in this truck, but we have big plans for this truck and you're gonna have to stay tuned to see exactly what we're gonna be using all of this power for. Battery one. Battery two. I'm gonna try to turn the batteries on. I noticed a power button right here. Oh. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait, 30%? Well, but how do we know if both batteries are on or just one? Oh. Well, one battery, two batteries. There you go. They're both at 30%. This is so cool. Now that we have most of the system installed inside, we need to get some charge on these batteries because we have plans for them later today. So there's a box here that says solar panel. Let's find out what they are. It's fancy looking. 
I like the black frame. It's like a 100 watt, 20 volt panel. I'm hoping to put these on the roof, but uh, we're gonna have to figure out a way to mount them. Oh, solar mounting feet. Really? Yeah. They bolt on and then we can self tapper it to the roof. I think I'll probably end up pulling these off and putting some silicone underneath, but it's gonna work for now. I also might swap out the self-tappers for actual bolts. All right, one panel down, one to go. Do you like my sky deck up here? I've never been on the roof of this thing before. It also came with a bunch of extension cables, so if this weren't long enough, we'd have these, but I think this is gonna be long enough. This cable actually came with user serviceable ends, which means I was able to take it apart to fit it through a smaller hole. Okay, so when I hook up these solar panels, we should see that we're making power. This actually has two separate uh, solar panel inputs, which means that we could have two separate arrays running at separate voltages. So for example, we could have the panels on the roof and a set of uh, portable ground mount panels at the same time hooked to the two separate inputs and it would optimize each one individually. That, I think that's pretty cool. There we go. Wow, <laughs> this thing's charging, guys. I think we're ready to go. What's the best part of getting to drive the truck right now? Ice cream. No. Oh. That we get to see if the alternate tr alternator charging works. Oh, that. Yep. It's time to find out. How come you get the fancy screen? Oh, because I can be over here like boop, 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 boop. There are a bunch of clouds right now. We're only making 23 watts of solar. It's time to see how much input we get from the alternator. Nothing's happening. Unclear why we're not getting any charge. Yeah, it's hooked up. As soon as you started driving, it started charging. We're charging at 400 watts right now. Is it it's working? It's working. Now we're making 280 watts, so it's very, it's variable. Yeah, I, I don't know why. This rate, we will be charged in eight hours. We gotta go on a road trip. And then it stopped because the voltage came down. It's just three watts. Yeah, that's good. So it also acts as an isolation system between the truck and the power kit so that you can't accidentally drain the truck through the power kit. I think we're gonna call that a smashing success, but now we wanna test this system out a little bit because it's not just about the install, it's also about how it performs. And what better way to do that than on date night? It's time to cool off. I was pretty hopeful that our EcoFlow system was arriving today, so I might have packed some equipment for making dinner that's absolutely ridiculous. Really? So I think that ultimately we're going to hardwire some outlets in the bed and various places on the truck that are 
that are hooked into this smart distribution panel. But it does come with one AC outlet already set up, ready to go right here. So we're gonna get started using power. Step one, something cold and frosty. I honestly have no idea what is going on here. Oh, is that a blender? It's a blender. Do you think the carbonation's gonna explode? Yeah, that might not be the best idea. It's like the definition of shaking up your soda. We have not looked at our phones all day, but I'm pretty sure. 200,000 subscribers. You guys, we hit 200,000 subscribers today. This is a great day. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching our videos, for subscribing to our page, for supporting our channel. It was almost exactly a year ago that we hit 100,000 subscribers and we cannot wait to see what the next year holds. And with that, I think it's time for the next test of our power system. Which is what? <laughs> is that the air fryer? <laughs> we managed to get up to 33% charge today. Right now we're using 7 watts and we have nothing coming in. Go for it, Courtney. 1.53, so we're using 1,500 watts right now of power. And at 33%, that lets us air fry for 48 minutes. The inverter in the power kit has a total output of 3,600 watts, which is more than two times that air fryer, which means we could like- Double air fry. We could double air fry. Have you ever seen more scenic fried pickles in your life? I think that we're both just sitting here kind of reflecting on the fact that like in the scope of an afternoon, we put a power system in our army truck. We were able to install that entire power system with only some pretty basic hand tools and the stuff that came in the boxes. They, they included everything, it's crazy. We didn't even reference it in single instruction manual or like know much about it beforehand. That's pretty amazing. We have 4,000 watt hours of battery capacity, plus the 200 watts of solar, plus the alternator charge input. We even have the cables so that we can charge with shore power and we can hook our smart generator into it. So this, this system is more powerful than the system that it's in our camper and it was way easier to install. Plus it's smaller and lighter. We just spent all that time installing an awesome power system on our property, but it only provides power on our property and this solves a different problem. This is mobile power that we can take anywhere, on our property, off our property, wherever, to do cool stuff. We have plans for this truck that we will share with you soon, but for now, just know that we are gonna put this power to use. So look forward to a future video where we really put the system to the test, dive into the nitty gritty, but thanks for watching this install video and thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. We're gonna finish date night with some more air fried food and thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> this thing, this one, just exploded in my face. Wait, it's on your shirt. Apparently air frying is more dangerous than like bulldozing. <laughs>